Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Saurabh Roy. I welcome you all in the lecture of microwave engineering. So, in the last lecture, we discussed about the cavity resonator, what are the different types of resonator and its resonating frequency. Now, we will see some other factors, key points, quality factor and coupling of that resonator. So, quality factor Q measure of the frequency selectivity of a resonant circuit or anti resonant circuit. So, whenever resonant or anti resonant circuit, we are finding out its quality factor. We already see all those things in network theory subjects to find out the RLC resonator and other things quality factor. So, same things here we will considering for microwave cavity resonator. Okay. So, we know that Q equal to 2 pi equal to maximum energy stored divided by energy dissipated per cycle. Okay. So, that is the Q or quality factor 2 pi maximum energy stored divided by energy dissipated per cycle. So, we can write down this equation equal to Q equal to omega W capital W divided by P where W equal to capital W equal to maximum energy stored and P is the average power loss. Okay. So, first we will find out its maximum energy stored then we will next step we will find out its average power loss. So, that is the if we will find out its value and if we will place the value in this particular equation we will get the quality factor of that our resonator. Okay. So, the quality factor is a measure of frequency selectivity of a resonance circuit or a anti resonance circuit. We already seen all those things in network theorem subject. So, that Q equal to we can consider Q equal to 2 pi maximum energy store divided by energy distributed per cycle. So, we can calculate Q equal to W that is frequency 2 pi f divided capital divided W divided by P. Okay. So, omega into capital W divided by P. So, omega we know 2 pi f frequency W equal to maximum energy stored and P is the average power loss. Now, we will calculate the W. So, the total energy stored in the resonator is obtained by integrating energy density over the volume of the resonator. So, total energy we can find out in a particular resonator by integrating its energy density function over the volume of that resonator. Okay. So, for a, a particular our cavity resonator, there are two things we can consider either is in electric field intensity or in magnetic field intensity. So, we can consider the energy stores either in terms of electric field intensity or either in terms of magnetic field in intensity, where E is the epsilon is the permittivity of the medium, mu is the permeability of the medium. So, here E and H are the peak value of the field intensities. Okay. So, that E and H are the peak value of the field intensity. So, E is the electric field intensity and H is the magnetic field intensity. So, that is the, so as per our necessity we can use this equation or that equation that is the maximum energy stored in the resonator circuit. Okay. Now, we will see the average power loss of the resonator. So, already in the last unit we mentioned that power loss in the resonator due to two reason one is attenuation loss and another one is the losses conductor in the surface okay so power loss we calculated ps equal to rs by 2 as h of t whole square da because in the surface of the resonator so there is only magnetic field is present the electric field component becomes zero and rs is the surface resistance so, if we we'll place the value of W and P in this particular equation Q, so we will get Q equal to omega mu that omega already existed. So, that is mu by 2 you can keep it outside. So, and here also RS by 2. So, 2 by 2 will get cancelled. So, we will get volume integral of H square and surface integral of H of T O square D. So, that is the quality factor. So, now we can write down we can mention it h square equal to h of t tangential component plus normal component square. So, where h n is the peak value of the normal magnetic intensity. Okay. But for a particular resonator h t square is the approximately twice the value of h square averaged over the volume. For a particular rectangular web resonator approximately the value is twice. So, if you put those values that is the approximate quality factor equation will be omega mu volume that is the, this volume integral whatever the exact volume will come h square and h t square that is almost uh, double h t square equal to 2 h square so if you will plus this value then it will come 2 r s then this and this will get cancelled 
and we will get that part is integral volume dot bb. So, volume and here will come the surface. So, that is the approximate equation. We can calculate from this equation also. So, that is the quality factor of our rectangular cavity or circular cavity resonator. So, that is the quality factor. The maximum energy stored divided 2 pi maximum energy stored divided by energy distributed per second. So, then we are finding out its value q equal to we can identify q equal to w, w divided by p where w is the maximum energy stored and energy p is the power which is energy distributed per, per second okay or power losses. So, so, these things we can consider q equal to w we know the value of w equal to either in magnetic or electric field we can calculate mu by 2 half mu by 2 h square dv or in terms of electric field epsilon by 2 v e square d and the power losses is comes always in the magnetic terms for a rectangular or circular cavity resonator because losses occurs in the surface resistance due to the magnetic field is present only there tangential magnetic field is there so so if we we'll place all those value will reach this particular equation after considering the approximation of that is us. okay so that is the quality factor of the resonator now we'll move to the next part that is the coupling Focus. So, whenever we will see the in the last lecture, we will mention there is a probe is incited to match the particular frequency and the desert frequency. So, here the coupling things is the important factor. So, whenever whenever you will see the RLC resonator, the resonating frequency we can calculate F naught equal to 1 by 2 pi root over LC. And quality factor of a RLC resonator we not omega naught L by R. So now if the KPT is coupled by means of ideal N1 N is to 1 transformer and a series inductance LS to a generator having internal impedance ZG, then the coupling circuit and equivalent circuit are shown in this below. So, whenever you see this is our resonator, LLC resonator, whenever we will considering its frequency, RLC resonator, the frequency is F naught equal to 1 by 2 pi root over LC and Q naught equal to omega naught L by R for this particle. Now, this thing is coupled by a transformer whose internal series inductance is LS, ZG is internal impedance, okay. So, it is N is to 1 is that is ratio. So, if we will consider this circuit and its equivalent circuit whenever we will write down, so it will come N V G and square ZG and square LS R L C. So that is the equivalent circuit, coupling circuit and its equivalent circuit. So whatever the coupled, uncoupled resonator or unload resonator is coupled with some transformer which trans ratio is N is to 1, okay. So whenever the things will come, so the quality factor value will be changes. So the quality factor of that loading system is generally will come QL equal to omega naught L divided by R plus N square ZG. So, the condition will become for N square LS should be less than R plus less than less than R plus N square ZG. Because whenever we will see in the last equation, there are two things are come N square ZG, N square LS and R also. So, R plus N square ZG should be less than N square LS or it should be greater than so, greater than greater than the value of n square ls should be less than less than the value of r plus n square jg. So, which we can mention there r plus n square jg. So, for n square ls less than less than r plus n square jg. So, the ql will become ql will become omega naught l divided by r plus n square jg. So, where k equal to we can consider the coupling coefficient k equal to n square uh, jg divided by Okay, so K we can consider N square ZG divided by R, which is called the coupling coefficient. So, if we we'll place the value, then we will get QL equal to omega naught L divided by R plus N square ZG equal to Q naught divided by 1 plus K. So, how it is come? So, first we will consider this equation Q equal to omega naught L divided by R plus N square ZG. Okay. So, this is omega naught L divided by R plus N square ZG. Same equation we written there. So, now we are common taking common R. So, if we will take common R, R 1 plus. So, it will come 1 plus N square ZG divided by R. Okay. 
and omega naught L. So this n square Zz divided by R, we are considering this value is K. So we will get omega naught L by R, we can consider, we already know from earlier question, Q equal to omega naught L by R. So we not mention, we can mention that Q naught divided by 1 plus K. Okay. So that is the equation we is Q naught divided by 1 plus K. Now, from this equation, if we we'll divide, we can rearrange the equation like that, 1 by QL equal to 1 by Q0 divided plus 1 by Q extra. So, how we can reach this particular equation? So, first, if we we'll write QL, so QL equal to given is Q0 divided by 1 plus K. So, we can mention that 1 plus K divided by Q0 equal to 1 by QL, okay. So, we can rearrange the equation 1 by QL, we can write 1 plus K divided by 1. So, 1 by Q0 is there, we know 1 by Q0 and this K by Q0, we can write down 1 by Q external, okay, equal to 1 by QL, okay. So, 1 by QL equal to 1 by Q0 plus 1 by Q external, okay. Because whenever this term is not there, this loading term is not there, then QL become Q0, okay. So, that is why we are considering this one is the external part, Q0 divided by K. So, we can write down Q external equal to Q0 divided by K, okay. So, this is the coupling thing. So, now we will see what is that, that K equal to, we consider K equal to coupling coefficient. So, now we will see the coupling coefficient, what are the different values. So, there are three things that comes under the coupling. One is critical coupling, one and another one is over coupling and another one is under coupling. So, first see the critical coupling. If the resonator is matched to the generator, then K becomes 1. So, if the K becomes 1, the loaded QL will be Q0 divided by 1 plus K. If you place K equal to 1, then we will get Okay, Q0 divided by 2. So, that is the consideration for critical coupling where K value is 1. Okay. Now, if over coupling, that coupling coefficient value is greater than 1. Okay. So, if the cavity terminals are at a voltage maximum in the input line at resonance. So, K we can consider K equal to rho. What is rho is the voltage standing at pressure. So, QL will become Q0 divided by 1 plus K, so instead of K, we can write down the value of rho. So that is the over coupling consideration when K is greater than 1. Now coming to the next point, that is the under coupling. The cavity terminals at a voltage minimum. So over coupling, we get voltage maximum. Under coupling, we are getting voltage minimum. And here K value is the less than 1. Or K equal to, we can write down the reciprocal of voltage standing vibration. So, if we we'll place this value in this particular equation, Q0 equal to 1 by K. So, instead of K, if you are place K equal to 1 by rho, okay. So, if you will place 1 by rho, then we will get rho plus 1 and that Q0, okay. So, that is the condition for under coupling cavity resonator. Now, we will draw the graph between standing wave ratio and coupling coefficient. So, what are the graph? So, that is the figure which represents the coupling coefficient versus standing wave pressure. So, here these things is comes under over coupled when uh, we are considering the coupling coefficient k is greater than 1. So, this graph part is coupled comes for over coupled condition. Okay. So, if k, uh, k greater than 1, what are the standing wave ratio and coupling coefficient? Okay. Now, coming to the under coupled. Okay. So, under coupled condition, the graphs will be like that, slightly decreasing, okay. So, that is the consideration for under coupled and this one for over coupled, how the coupling coefficient is changes with the standing wave ratio, okay. If coupling coefficient is increases, if k greater than 1, that is over coupled, then standing wave ratio is also increases proportional. But whenever k less than 1, that, that graph is inverse way. Okay, so 1 by rho we can already mentioned. So here the things are, if standing wave ratio is increases, then the uh, coupling coefficient will be decreases. Okay, for lower value of coupling coefficient, we are getting higher value. So that is under coupled and this one is 
of our company. So this is the overall things of um, of unit two. So unit two we are starting from circular waveguide. Then we are moving to the next part cavity resonator. So cavity resonator also two types rectangular as well as circular cavity resonator. Then we find its different equation. And then moving to the next part or last part that is discussed in today lecture that is quality factor as well as that coupling how the coupling is going on and what are the different condition of coupling under coupling over coupling and k1 equal to 1 that critical coupling so in the next lecture we'll discuss about the some next topic will start or unit 3 will start okay thank you everyone.